Literature gives us the opportunity to experience lives, perspectives, and worlds different from our own. Though remember, friend, a good story has many readings, and this is but one. While you finally found happiness with your third husband, whom you love dearly, ever since the rabid dog bit him, his mental condition has been deteriorating. For your own safety, you made sure the first three chambers in his gun were empty, but now he's about to pull the trigger for the fourth time. Your own gun weighs heavy in your hand. It's you or him. So, would you do it? I mean, could you do it? This is the dilemma faced by Janie Crawford, the main character in Zora Neale Hurston's novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Oh, right, but you haven't read it yet, sorry. Well, let me tell you a bit about Janie's journey, and then we'll see how you handle the book's impossible question. Thanks so much to World Anvil for helping us discuss important worlds in literature. So you haven't read Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Sadly, that's not too surprising. For years after it was published in 1937, Hurston's novel languished in relative obscurity. But in the last 40 years or so, its reputation has risen like the summer humidity in the Everglades, which is to say a lot. Heads up though, while our discussion today will be PG-13 rated, the novel itself does include sexual assault, depictions of racism, and other acts of violence. But with that out of the way, let's travel to Florida at the turn of the 20th century. You are Janie Mae Crawford, a woman returning alone to your old hometown. Years ago, you'd been living here as a wealthy widow when you met a younger man and then flew town. All of your old neighbors started to gossip that your beau must have cheated you out of your money, but only your best friend Phoebe bothers to ask you what actually happened. So you respond by telling her your entire life story, you know, as one does. The story flashes back to your teenage years in western Florida, where you live with your grandmother Nanny. Though you dream of finding love and harmony, Nanny has a different dream for you. Because both Nanny and your mother were sexually assaulted in their youth, her dream centers around protecting you from predatory men. Nanny's solution? Marry you off, at age 16, to a well-off middle-aged farmer. This loveless May-December romance goes about as well as you'd guess. So when a handsome stranger named Jody Starks comes to town and starts flirting with you, well, it's only a matter of time before you ditch the farmer. You and Jody swiftly get married and head off to Eatonville, Florida, one of the first self-governing all-black towns in the United States. There, Jody leverages his confidence, charisma, and wealth to become Eatonville's mayor. But as he's making his dreams come true, he starts to trample over all of yours. And you come to realize that he sees you as more of a prop to burnish his image than an actual human being. He becomes controlling, refusing to let you talk to visitors, and even resorting to physical violence when he's angry. So over the years, your resentment grows until you feel completely defeated. But then, seemingly overnight, Jody starts to waste away, which makes him lash out at you even more aggressively. And when he berates you in front of some of your neighbors, you finally snap and let Jody know exactly what you think of him for everyone to see. His hold over you and Eatonville is finally broken. You confront him one more time on his deathbed, lambasting him for never letting you be yourself, and he dies with those words still ringing in his ears. Maybe now, at last, you'll have a chance to live life on your own terms. Well, author Zora Neale Hurston definitely did live life on her own terms. When she was a child, her family moved from Alabama to Eatonville, where her father really did become the mayor. Then when she was 16, she set off on her own, eventually finding herself part of the Harlem Renaissance, which you can totally hear more about in our episode on that here. Hurston's writing was highly praised during the late 30s and early 40s, but by the time she had passed in 1960, it had fallen into obscurity. Hurston also faced criticism in her lifetime for employing common African-American vernacular English in her character's dialogue. While she was trying to find a way to represent the authentic language she'd grown up hearing, there were critics, both black and white, who felt that by doing so, she was portraying her black characters as foolish. And these critics' takes contributed to her books falling out of fashion. Fast forward to 1975, when Alice Walker, the author of The Color Purple, which we actually have to do an episode on, so we marked that down, wrote an article about encountering Hurston's writing for the first time. Hurston's depictions of strong, independent black women and her skill at translating spoken folk language to written form inspired Walker to call the earlier author a genius. Interest in her work sparked, and Their Eyes Were Watching God has since become one of the most studied and best-selling books of the 20th century, a reversal of fortune that actually reflects one Janie experiences in the novel. After Jody's death, you meet a handsome younger man who everyone calls Tea Cake. You slowly start developing a strong romantic interest in one another, which then scandalizes Eatonville, because they think he's beneath you and because they assume he's just trying to take your money. Joke's on them, though, because Tea Cake treats you better than either of your previous husbands ever did. Besides, you've lived most of your life Nanny's way, and now you want to try to live it your own way. You and Tea Cake move to a part of the Everglades around Lake Okeechobee called the Muck, 
Far from trying to take your savings, Tea Cake gets a job working the fields to support you both. But since you miss each other terribly when you're apart, you decide to work alongside him. Life is glorious for a while. That is, until a hurricane slams into Florida. While fleeing from its fury, you get swept up in a flood and end up clinging to some floating debris with a rabid dog. Tea Cake rescues you, but is bitten by the dog in the process. And this leads to the situation we described at the top of the episode. Rabies drives Tea Cake mad, and he tries to shoot you. It's you or him. And even though he's made you happier than you've ever been before, you now value yourself enough to shoot him down and save your own life. You're arrested and put on trial that same day, but after you tell the story of your and Tea Cake's love from the stand, you're acquitted. With Tea Cake gone, you return to Eatonville, and we're back where the story began. And though you'll mourn Tea Cake for the rest of your life, you also recognize how much you grew in your relationship. And as the story ends, you realize you've found the harmony you've so long sought. Their Eyes Were Watching God is a powerful story about one woman's journey to find her independence and voice. Hurston's depiction of life in Eatonville and the Muck helps to keep alive a part of historical American culture often ignored by white mainstream media, and her novel also offers us 21st century folks a chance to experience Hurston's ear for dialect as well as her soaring prose. And while I admit we spoiled a bunch, trust me, no plot summary will ever compare to following Jamie's inspiring journey of finding her own voice for yourself in their eyes we're watching God. So head down to your local library or bookseller and experience for yourself why this once forgotten book has proven to be truly unforgettable. And if you'd like to set yourself up with the best tools possible for telling an unforgettable story of your own, our friends over at World Anvil got you covered. As we've mentioned before, a bunch of us at Extra Credits have been crafting our own worlds for years now, be they RPGs, video games, or novels. And if you're like us, you know how much work it is keeping all of the disparate elements of your world-building project organized. World Anvil to the rescue! World Anvil is an award-winning tool set used by millions of world builders, writers, and gamers that helps you create, store, and organize your world setting. Honestly, I can't say enough good things about this tool set. It's phenomenal. You can use it to craft entire RPG campaigns, tracking timelines, family trees, and diplomatic relationships, add awesome interactive elements to maps to help bring your story to life, organize your thoughts and worlds with their nifty and linkable freeform whiteboard feature. And once everything is forged, you can easily share what you've built with your readers, patrons, players, or whoever. In other words, exactly the tools that help me focus on the fun parts of world building. And with over 25 stunning visual themes, it's perfect for all genres, from sci-fi to fantasy, space opera to historical fiction, all of which have come in handy for my ever-growing 17th century rom-com slash rifts slash Elden Ring slash Gungeon slash Stargate slash Kingdom Hearts fanfic campaign, which after its quick dip into Sonic 2 lore, now has expanded to take place across a multiverse comprised exclusively out of Jim Carrey's filmography. And riddle me this, what new feature has me saying, yes, Man, and helped me keep all of this straight in my spotless mind? Why, their new Chronicles tool, of course, which let me, myself, and Irene link all of our timelines and maps together seamlessly, which was pretty kick-ass, too. So if you want to up your world-building game and just have an awesome time doing it, you can check out World Anvil absolutely free. And for a limited time, you can receive 40% off any annual membership by using the code extra credits. Then not only will the awesome worlds you build come to life faster, but you'll also be helping out us at EC in the process. Once again, that's code extra credits for 40% off any annual World Anvil membership. And thanks so much for your support. We can't wait to see the worlds you build. Thank you so much to Joseph Blame, Dominic Valenciana, Casey Muscha, Arcalite Games, Angelo Valenciana, Alicia Bramble, and Ahmed Zia Turk for being fantastic legendary patrons. 